welcome. You are watching Cover Story and I am Priya Segal. This week we are going to be taking a look at the battle for the capital. For the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi has realized that he just cannot make sense of the numbers game thrown up during the last assembly elections and has asked for fresh polls. Judging by the state that the Congress is in, it does seem that it's not really going to be a player in these assembly elections. The fight is going to be between BJP and the Aam Aadmi Party. The BJP currently doesn't have a face for Delhi. What it is hoping is, however, that the Modi wave, which swept the party to power in Maharashtra and Haryana, will work its magic in the capital as well. As for the Aam Aadmi Party, it does hope that it has a chance of striking back. But has the capital forgiven Kejriwal for running away when it gave him a chance earlier on? That really is the big question that we are going to be debating in this edition of Cover Story. Of all the stakeholders in Delhi, the stakes are highest for Arvind Kejriwal, the Aam Aadmi Party leader. As for him, this will be his last bid to remain relevant. There has been much turbulent water under the AAP bridge since the last Delhi polls. The party is splintering. Kejriwal seems to have lost the middle class vote, and instead of bringing a fresh slate of hope, he carries along with him the baggage of a 49-day failure. Can he make a comeback? In Lok Sabha, me we actually did gain from Congress votes. What happened is that we lost some of our core votes, which is middle class voters, people who sympathize with the movement. They said, "We voted you for governance. We didn't vote you to come out." So the move about resignation, which we thought was sacrifice, we thought we were being different from parties, we were not sticking to chair. But that's not how people received it. People thought. we were abdicating our responsibility people wanted us to govern they wanted us to compromise if necessary people wanted us to sort out their day to day problems not only the lokpal thing so we erred in judgment people were unhappy they punished us for us and in democracy we learn from the people you say all right boss i've learned the lessons but i'm confident that they won't punish us twice for the same offense. that's the basic tenet of law you're not punished twice for the same crime no people have been disillusioned and arvind has uh, uh, re- recognized the fact and has gone out of his way to apologize to people so that has been happening in all the sabhas and mohalla sabhas but yes people were disappointed they they expected a lot and there was a wave and arvind was riding on a wave whether is the lower classes uh, the economically marginalized classes the jj slums the cluster areas or even the middle classes In fact, uh, all across the spectrum, there was this need to to for this to to watch this whole battle between David and Goliath that we saw last time. You no, know, depend on what we are saying is a comeback. Arvind Kejriwal is very important in Delhi's political map at this point of time. He is a proven politician at this point of time after the first grand entry which he made in December last year. But the fact of the matter is, it's also a fact. that he's given up on delhi too early it was a 49 day government and there was tremendous disappointment which followed i don't think the aam aadmi party has recovered from that shock it was a very immature decision to have taken at that point of time privately most aap leaders admit that they lost the middle class vote the movement and there was tremendous disappointment which followed i don't think the aam aadmi party has recovered from that shock it was a very immature decision to have taken at that point of time Privately most AAP leaders admit that they lost the middle class vote the minute Kejriwal put on his ubiquitous muffler and sat on a dharna as chief minister this is what turned the urban middle class vote which was earlier Kejriwal's chief supporter against him at that time people like the noted lawyer Harish Salve lost no time in voicing their disappointment Gandhi's agitation was against a system which did not have a rule of law it was a monarchical system Gandhi fought against a monarchy we are a republic governed by a rule of law yes protest is a form of ex- speech is a form of expression against a government if the chief minister of a state wants to protest there are ways of doing it not this way since he has apologized and he has said that he will rectify all his past mistakes it is for the people of delhi to you know forgive him or to you know take him on and reject him 
but you know he has this growing advantage uh, i mean this advantage is there because the congress is this uh, integrating and the bjp is leaderless in delhi so you know he is the only face you know of in both the part uh, out of all the three parties which is there for people to choose uh, for otherwise i mean if you vote for bjp you will be choosing an anonymous leader if you vote for the congress you will again be choosing an anonymous leader so unless and until these two parties announce someone i don't know who will be coming to debates in television on television and other places to represent these parties when they you know, take on uh, kejriwal and his aam aadmi party the core question remains can kejriwal make a comeback to do so he needs to not just do a repeat but actually better his last year's score and get an outright majority for this time round the congress may not be as keen to offer open support of course the capital is a buzz with rumors of a backroom deal between the congress and the aap to keep the bjp out but for the record this is denied nobody i think envisaged that uh, mr kejriwal will be still maverick even after he become a uh, you think he has lost that chance because you know he is trying to make an another attempt to come back in the public imagination well he certainly has lost a chance if he had carried on you know then and if he had established himself hmm. and then probably call for an election uh, this scenario would have been very but he's taken the opposition space away from the congress at least give him that much no 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 of course i'm saying that i'm not saying i'm not underestimating his uh, capacity or anything like that but his stability did you underestimate it earlier i did i must tell you very frankly that um, i didn't realize that this was the kind of thing that he had what is the role of the congress in this election kingmaker um we've already seen that earlier this year uh they tried to play the kingmaker with ap government they tried to offer support they said we are supporting this government ap said we don't want the support and even after they uh, ab- abandoned power here they said no it was never a congress supported government we never took it so that's that was the spectacle the theater of the absurd we've already seen so it's a very limited role and even if the ap tomorrow fi- uh, forms a government with congress's uh, support it just goes against the dna of ap's politics because they've been attacking the congress they came they f- eaten up the congress pie so you know with what credibility will they take congress's support what the aap strategists are counting on however is the jogi jhopri slum vote this has traditionally been the congress vote bank but kejriwal and co seem confident that they have swayed this away from the congress bharat mata ki In addition, they are also pitching price hike, electricity tariff hike, and inflation under Modi's Achhe Din Raj against Kejriwal's slashing of electricity bills. Posters comparing Kejriwal's 49 days against Modi's 100 days are already up in the capital and are essentially the talking points for our leaders. So, inflation is down. Aam Aadmi Party or the Congress will be barking at a wrong tree if they think that uh, inflation is not down. the people are not feeling that pinch and certain decisions have been taken in the interest of the youth for employment so overall bjp governance at the center will have a straight impact in the delhi elections delhi's battle is i think the only question here in delhi is the constituency of the poor Uh, Modi is very clearly the middle class hero the hero of the gdp friendly crowd um and after his brief rule here uh somehow kejriwal seems to have lost the middle class vote the middle class had reposted out of faith in him that eroded after his rule or during his rule too because he wasn't the perception was that he wasn't able to successfully make the transition from being an activist to an administrator um so the 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 battle really is for the poor now the poor which has been uh pampered with freebies and uh, subsidies and cheaper electricity cheaper this cheaper that and that's the uh, language that aap talks even in its hoardings it's talking about bijli and uh, pani ka bill kam ho gaya however if modi is called autocratic or dictatorial by his allies then so is arvind kejriwal style under scanner his party has seen many defections during the last year with prominent faces like shahja ilmi and kumar vishwas quitting In fact sources say that all is not well between Kejriwal and the Bhushan father son duo. According to AAP insiders it is Kejriwal and Manish Sisodia who call the shots with even a key AAP strategist like Yokender Yadav occasionally voicing his displeasure at being sidelined. This is what happened a few months ago when Yadav wanted the party to contest the Haryana state assembly but Kejriwal and co decided against it. And it cannot become a coterie. It has to be democratic. Voices have to be heard. 
constructive criticism. Voices of dissent must be encouraged. Must be encouraged. And if this, there is indeed problem with some of the senior leaders, they should step down and create more leaders. That is sadly lacking for a new party. And I will speak against it. Even after one year, KG Bala has not really defined ideology except for a vague kind of leftism, except for a you know a vague kind of secularism which is there, but which are very undefined as of now in the party. And you know some faces have fallen off. Uh, there are some people who have not yet not been heard of for a very long time. You know that's why this party is somehow not going anywhere. So if they had to commit, say, uh, how do you bind a party which has Yavendra Yadav, which has Prashant Bhushan, uh, all these different kinds of uh, people. So uh, no wonder that Sh Shazia Elmi said goodbye. So obviously this will be the tendency at the top when you don't have an ideological adhesive to make the party you know, really stick together. And yes, it's pretty much uh, a one-man show, maybe two-man show uh, at most. But that's pretty much it. You can't have Mere Admi, Tumhare Admi. You can't do that. It is, it is everybody's party. That is the difference between Aam Admi party and others. Interestingly, in Delhi, it will be a straight fight against the BJP and AAP, with the Congress really reduced to the role of a bystander, or at best, a spoiler. So far, Modi's assembly wins have been against Congress chief ministers, whether in Haryana or Maharashtra. He didn't fare so well during the bipoles in Bihar and UP, where he took on non-Congress contenders. But after Jammu Kashmir, Jharkhand, Delhi will be the first big test for the Modi wave to pit itself against a non-Congress opposition. See, since May, it's quite clear that the BJP under Modi has been on a roll. They've been winning one election, one uh, state election after another. Um, but essentially, who they have defeated so far is a Congress, a Congress that's already in shambles as far as credibility and morale goes. Um, so that's what makes the Delhi election more interesting and uh, somewhat different because there is no Congress here. Uh, the, the chief foe of the BJP in Delhi is not Congress, it's the AAP, it's a new animal here. Um, so how he tackles that, um, how the how Modi will, who Modi will attack? He, he's not going to attack the family or the Damad or anybody else here. Um, who is he going to attack? Is he going to attack Arvind Kejriwal directly? Is he going to take him on for his 49-day rule? As far as Delhi is concerned, I don't think uh, it will be fair to say that uh, there's nothing, you're not facing the challenge from the Congress. Uh, in my own opinion and our assessment, Amadmi Party is definitely the main challenger for BJP, but Congress will be chipping in also equally well this time. Because uh, the Aam Admi Party, in that 49 days, they lost out. And the, the, the mood of Delhi, or the voters of Delhi, which favoured them, realised that it's more theatrical that the uh, Aam Admi Party does. And they, are, they believe in politics are going on the street. This brings us to the BJP's game plan. The BJP knows that both geographically and perceptionally, a vote for the capital tends to become a referendum on the centre. Even before the dates have been announced, the party is getting a strategy together to wrest control of the capital, whether it was Nitin Gadkari's appeasement of e-rickshaw drivers. The BJP is yet to finalise its list for chief ministerial probables under whom it will fight the New Delhi elections. But there are a couple of names that are doing the rounds. First, there was speculation that this might be Kiran Bedi, but that speculation on that has soon been scotched. Now, as it stands, three names have made it to the shortlist. One is Satish Upadhyay, the Delhi BJP chief. Another is Vinakshi Lekhi. She is the articulate MP from New Delhi who hasn't yet been accommodated in the Council of Ministers. Maybe Modi is saving her up for Delhi. And third, of course, is Harsh Vardhan. He, as you know, is the face under whom BJP fought the last Assembly elections and notched up a pretty good score. In the recent cabinet reshuffle, moreover, Harsh Vardhan has been sidelined to a lesser active ministry, perhaps freeing him for Delhi elections. Well, we'll soon know, but time and Amit Shah will soon tell us who that face is. Well, I can't really say on that. That's a decision which needs to be taken by the Delhi state uh, uh, unit along with the central uh, parliamentary board. All these decisions will be taken. Well, we are still away, by maybe about three months from now for the election. I'm sure if uh, the face has to be projected, it will be projected. If it is not, we have done extremely well without projecting also in Haryana and Maharashtra. Maybe that could be a strategy 
वी आर स्टिल गोइंग इन झारखंड लाइक दैट सो आई गेस समी हैज टू बी फिटेड अगेंस्ट अरविंद केजरीवाल हु इज अ बिग नेम नाउ इन डेली पॉलिटिक्स इन नेशनल पॉलिटिक्स विजुअली पीपल सी हिम एज हु इज सो मे बी दिल हैव टू डू अ री थिंक विच विल बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम महाराष्ट्र एंड हरियाणा बिकॉज इट माइट नॉट वर्क हियर बिकॉज देर इज एन अरविंद केजरीवाल हियर अनलाइक इन महाराष्ट्र और हरियाणा But in Delhi, Delhi is a place from where you know the Jansang basically originated. All the top leaders of Jansang were from Delhi. Many of them, rather, you know, Balraj Badhok, who was one of the co-founders of Jansang, contested from Delhi. Subsequently, BJP also, when it was formed, both Atal Bihari Vajpayee in '77 and '80 and uh, L K Advani in '89 and '90 contested from Delhi. So Delhi has been very important for BJP. And to have a uh, to go into elections without any leader here. is very strange especially because the only time bjp was in power in delhi was between 93 and 98 and during that time in 5 years bjp had three chief ministers delhi is a very all said and done delhi may be uh, insignificant as far as numerical significance goes but delhi is very important politically delhi is the only city which probably reflects the core national issues more than any other uh, uh, state or uh, union territory so obviously delhi being what it is and being very sensitive to the party being power at the center so obviously i, I would think that if they have not made up their mind on harshvard then it's not best best not to go with a chief minister in face bjp must have a face whoever the face is you know whether it is uh, you know vijay goel or harshvardhan or you know satish upadhyay or jagdish mukhi the senior most uh, you know leader of the party jagdish mukhi you know is also the punjabi face punjabis are the dominant community in delhi and uh, bjp has ignored them in the last 12 years they have had you know four or five people from the west community who were presidents of the party and now there is a brahmin from uttar pradesh so punjabis are one community bjp can actually woo and can get so you know it, it will all depend on how the bjp strategy is right now i think they are going to be in some trouble if they do not announce a leader for this coming polls as for the congress the party knows that after holding sway on the capital for 15 years it is now reduced to the sidelines in fact you even mentioned the party in the battle for the capital which is clearly why it hasn't looked for a chief ministerial face to project just finding candidates seems to be an uphill task and this could be a big mistake for like most of the states even delhi lacks a tall leader shila dikshit has ruled herself out of electoral politics The party is not keen on projecting Ajay Makhan as his Delhi face, and Arvind Singh Lovely just doesn't make the grade. Yet the Congress is doing very little to promote another face. So my home coming here now. I await whatever uh, work I'm assigned by the party. I'm not looking for anything. I'll be very frank with you. I so whatever I'm asked to do, I'll do. But you're not going to say no to active politics. No, I'm not going to be in active politics. Not in electoral politics. No, certainly not. Congress, as you know, is you know, at its worst kind of state, and it has no leader in Delhi. You know, uh, during 15 years of Sheila Dixit's uh, governance in Delhi, uh, you know, Congress did not get strengthened in any manner. Sheila ji would go down in history as the longest-serving Chief Minister of Delhi. but she is the will also go down in history as the one who never allowed the organization to flourish you know her personality was absolutely overbearing and uh, you know whatever she was basically ruling the city th- through the bureaucrats and there was no way you know she developed any leader except she tried to develop her own son who was member of parliament from east delhi they don't have a leader leadership face at this point of time sheila they- she was basically ruling the city th- through the bureaucrats and there was no way you know she developed any leader except she tried to develop her own son who was member of parliament from east delhi they don't have a leader leadership face at this point of time sheila dikshit has somehow become discredited and the second rung there's nobody in the second rung whether it be arvind the lovely whether it be arun yusuf who can really lead the party so obviously for the congress they have to stay in relevance and they have to preach their ideology however difficult it is The Congress clearly needs a comeback strategy for it is losing all its traditional vote banks to the AAP while the BJP is holding on to its middle class vote and making new gains. The Sikh voter has left the Congress after 84 and if OVC fields candidates from the MIM then that will further split the Muslim vote away from the Congress. 
So obviously in Delhi also, what I think the Muslim vote will be split and it will go to, a bulk of it will go to Aam Aadmi Party to some extent to the Congress and maybe the MIM will be a force in one or two constituencies if they finally get Shoaib Iqbal. They need a face here, they, they, they do need a face here, they don't have a face, so they're looking for a face, they may find one. I think the Purvanchali vote used to be during Sheila Dixit's time to easily uh, assume that it would go to Congress. That has changed now. I think the Purvanchali vote in, uh, with the last parliamentary vote, votes, uh, polls went in bulk to the BJP. Similarly, the Punjabi vote was with the BJP for a very long time because of the partition, because of the, you know, the refugee consciousness which had been inherited by this generation of Punjabis. But uh, for, for Srila Dixit proved them wrong. But again, that vote has gone back to the BJP. So obviously, these are issues which will play out in Delhi. And I think uh, the larger middle class at this point of time is disappointed with the Aam Aadmi Party. That vote is definitely Modi's vote. As you said that uh, the Jogi Jhopdi vote, etc. I think it, it's all going to go towards uh, the Aam Aadmi Party. The weaker sections, the sections which used to earlier vote for the Congress, I think will identify themselves with the Aam Aadmi Party. The middle classes, you know, some of them were reclaimed by BJP. Uh, when the Lok Sabha elections took place and the Modi phenomenon is still very much alive and BJP will make a lot of you know, uh, inroads into the middle class sections of Delhi and will get a large chunk of this segment. But overall, the Aam Aadmi Party, I think, will make inroads into the Congress Minority Bank, the Congress Dalit Bank, the Congress Resettlement Bank, Resettlement Colonies Bank, the, you know, and other weaker sections, the migrant population, etc. Well, you heard the players and you also heard the experts decoding the difference between the players' posturing and where they actually stand. But now we are going to go and talk to the actual stakeholders, the citizens of Delhi, and find out what they want from these elections. Kejriwal, initially, I was all for him, but he was very disappointing. Somewhere along the line, he has completely lost track of what he was trying to do. And I don't think he has now been able to come back to what he was originally. So I don't think Modi, um, uh, I don't think Kejriwal has a chance of coming back. I think Modi has proved what he should be, his medal, and I think it will be Modi. Definitely BJP. I am a total Narendra Modi supporter because I think he's doing an absolutely fantastic job with the country. And the same model is going to work very well for Delhi as well. The Ahmadni Party I never believed in. I don't believe in their ideology, neither their leader, because he was handed Delhi on a platter and he just abandoned it and ran away. So that kind of closes that chapter. Congress, unfortunately, the last hope was Rajiv Gandhi. With him and his assassination, Congress has lost out. So the BJP model works, the Modi model works, and I'm very hopeful that he's going to take us very far. Uh, we would uh, uh, always prefer a government uh, which uh, governs and um, uh, uh, takes care of the basic needs uh, for everybody and uh, they should uh, they should keep in mind uh, for a normal person the day to day issues uh, related to his life and um, they should um, i think handle all those departments which are um, which are handling uh, the basic maybe mcd maybe mutations maybe the registration where a normal person has to uh, uh, be busy in those uh, factors and they should, they should govern them well, make some system, make some processes which uh, the new government is talking about. We have a chance to get 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 a chance well, as a citizen of Delhi, the priority should be uh, uh, the, uh, the security of the women. Um, um, rape cases that are happening, they, that is what something ha has to be done about that and put a stop to that. And I think they have to improve the laws a bit. The old archaic laws have to go and new ones have to come in. There are some laws that are there even uh, before independence. I mean, th th you can't have it in today's world. What is today, we have to be in today's century. And we have to take the laws, change them to what suits the public today. 
That is what it should be done. That's what should be done. In fact, um, my parents in my school, when they come, have a standard joke, you know, when they ask about their child's future, they say that, chote bacche ko, should we send him to a tea stall and make him into Narendra Modi? Should we send him to IIT and turn him into Arvind Kejriwal? Or should we send him abroad, spend a lot of money to a university there and have him turn out as Rahul Gandhi? So Narendra Modi gets the vote, through and through. Now finally, let us just take a look at what exactly is at stake over here. Let's begin with the Aam Aadmi Party. Supposing it doesn't win Delhi this time, then the political future of the Aam Aadmi Party in general and Arvind Kejriwal in particular will be under a question mark. Moving on to the BJP, Delhi is really as close to the centre as any assembly can be. So the centre's policies will be most impacted in Delhi and the Modi wave will be most tested over here. Moreover, the party nearly won Delhi when Modi was not the Prime Minister. So if it doesn't put up as good a show and actually win Delhi this time when Modi is Prime Minister, then skeptics are going to be questioning the Modi wave. And finally, the Congress. Now currently the state that the Congress is in, it cannot hope to play king, but it can hope for a hung assembly where it gets to play kingmaker. But from us, that's all this week. Thank you for watching Cover Story and we'll see you again same time next week.